Okay, to uh, position the phantom, this is going to be wherever it's going to be. It's in the box or on the counter space, wherever they have it stored. When you take it out, you need to first just put it on the couch. And I guess, to step back a minute, you need to have a flat surface, usually a board that fits the table. If not, any flat board that was you know, a level board that you can make level, put it on the, the counter or the couch and level this and then put the phantom on. When you put the phantom on, you need the pegs towards the foot of the couch. Once you have that, everything is pretty much set that way. Other than now you just need to kind of level this portion of it by moving the thumb wheels inside here, moving them up until it's level to where you'd want it level, so where you can make movements down or up if you had to. And the same thing on the other end cap. You need to move this up, and then you get this level. If you had a level, you would can level it to start off with. Sometimes there's a bubble level in the Phantom here. But just to get, this is just a rough start. We just need to place it on the table, and then we're going to drive it in to the CT with the uh, CT controllers. And you're just going to drive it in until you get it close to the CT lights. And once you get that, you need to turn them on. Turn the lights on, you can see them down there. And then you just need to align this light, CT light, across the, the white line on the Phantom. So it's hitting this side, this side, and here. And also you need to also check to make sure that your sagittal is on. By moving, uh, so it illuminates the white line here. Meanwhile, it still needs to illuminate the top. And this is just going to get us in the ballpark. It's not going to be perfect. We're just going to start with this. Once you have this illuminated like this, you need to landmark the table. So you would zero the table. To the zero, this which is right there. Press that in. For this one you have to hold it for a while. And the table should zero. The display will show zero, wherever that may be. It will show zero. And once that's done, you could drive it in and check the other end. 600 millimeters. And check to make it illuminates around here. Once it illuminates around there, then the distance is correct. This way, you just verify that the sagittal is on. Usually there's a sagittal line that hits up here. In this case, there isn't. So you're just going to have to make do with this line and then the holes here. And once that is set, well, it's aligned right here, aligned on that side, bring it back out to zero and then start the process of scanning the end caps. And then that's it. Bringing it back out to zero. There you go, scan. We clicked OK. Now we're going to come down here to the daily prep. Shows a, a, more or less a tube here. And we're going to do a tube warm up. So we do daily prep. And now it comes up here and you click on tube warm up. Gary, who is, uh, we're going to click on new patient.
says uh, our tube warm up has been canceled since we did a tube warm up earlier today. We don't need to do one now, so we just click OK. We come up with this screen. We need to enter patient ID. That can be anything you want. One, two, three, four, five. Or it can be, you know, pretty much anything. This one, since earlier today we, we did one that said one, two, three, four, five, we want something different, so we'll just go five, 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 five. Now we need to do the patient name, and normally we put in Gamex test. Since we did Gamex test earlier this morning, we're going to do just Gamex, Gamex. And the reason for that is so we can pick it out of a uh, library. Once we do that, we come over here, and since we are in service up here, we're going to click on Service Generic Scan. Once we do that, we come up with all these parameters that need to be entered. Um, the milliamp right here should be 200, so we're going to click on that, and then we're going to enter 200. We're going to say OK. Once we do that, we're going to go to this button here where it says large body or SFOV. Click on that and we want small body. Then we're going to go to thickness. Anytime, uh, let, me, let me just uh, mention that anytime you see red up here, you will not be able to take a scan. You have to clear out all the red. And by setting these parameters the way we're setting them, you'll be allowed to do that. We're going to go to thick speed and we're going to click on 1.25. Once we do that, we're going to say OK. Many of these GE machines will have different uh, parts of the body on there, like they'll have head, abdomen, chest, and so forth. And if that is the case and these numbers aren't available, you will click on chest and then click OK. Since they're numbers for us, we're going to click on 1.25 and click OK. Now we're going to go over here and we're going to have our start location and our end location for the scan. We're not going to do a scout, which includes many slices. We're going to do just one slice, and so we want it to start at location zero. And we click on it and we enter zero. and we want it to end on location zero. So we're going to click zero there. We only want one image. It turned to one image. Things are still red, so something's not quite right. So we're going to look at this, and the milliamp changed to 800, and we're going to change that to 200 for a second time. We need to uh, now zero the machine. Stop. Attack button. Can you push it and then the display and then read zero. Right now it reads nothing. Now it reads zero. Since Gary zeroed the machine as you just saw all the red now went away. We're set to go. All our parameters are set. Zero, zero. Start location, end location. Number of images, one. Fixed speed of 1.25. Small body, 200 milliamp. The other ones I really don't care about. Now we're going to come down here and we're going to hit this confirm button. Once I've hit that, I'm waiting on the council here for the start scan button to light. Once it lights, I'm going to hit that to take the scan. Now I got to make sure nobody's in the room. And now it's right. You Nobody have to close the, the door. Room. Normally, you should be. You should close the door. Okay. Now we're going to hit it. It take took the picture. Okay. We're going to come over here and normally we'd go into Image Works.
Right. If you're already in image words, you'd go to browser. And here's our Gamex. Gamex that we put in just a few minutes ago. There's the Gamex test we did earlier today. So we just click, click on Gamex, Gamex. Go down here to viewer. Click viewer. And here's our here's our scan of that end cap. To give it some contrast, we use the center button on the mouse. Just hold it down and slide it slide it along the desktop. We want to put a crosshatch pattern over this image. So that right there, we'll put the crosshatch on there. And as you can see, the picture we took is perfectly centered. We have it in the middle of these pins, in that pin, and in the center hole. And so we don't have to do any movement to the phantom. We, we did that earlier today, so uh, no movement needs to be done to get it centered. But if this was off, if this pin was down here, let's say for example, you would have to go out there and on one of the legs of the phantom, turn it down to move the phantom up. You would then come back in, you'd come over to this screen, do a repeat series, and you'd hit confirm again. Once you hit confirm again, you'd wait for the scan button to light. You'd push the scan button, take another image, come over to here and in the series of images we would push the plus sign which will bring us to the next image. Once we push the plus sign this image will appear, it will be the new image and you should see that your pin moved a little bit. If you're not on that cross hatch pattern again you'd go out and you'd do adjustments to the phantom. For example if this pin was over there you'd have to go out and physically take the phantom and move it a little bit that way. Once you did that movement, you'd come back in, you'd hit, you know, new series again, and you'd do the whole the whole set all over again. Okay. Okay. Once we uh, have this end cap and we're and we're pleased with the way it, it looks, we have the the cross hatch pattern right in the center of these pins, as close as possible to the center, and in the center of that hole. We now want to look at the other end of the phantom. And the other end is 600 millimeters away, so what we need to do is drive the phantom into the bore 600 millimeters, and then come back and take pictures again and line that end cap up. The way we do that is we come over to this screen, and the start and end location is now going to be 600. So we put on there I-600. The reason I is on there, I have no idea, but I believe it's for in. It's for uh, inferior. Inferior. In first or in the first location. Okay. It means inferior. I say in, so I 600. We go to this end location is going to be also I 600. And we don't want 121 images, we want one. So click on that and it already went It went to one automatically. There's no red highlights on here, so we're good to go. The orange highlight, that's fine. So we come back down and when we hit confirm, it'll tell us to now move the table. It's right here. Scan. So we're going to move the table first, and as you see, the table's moving in. It moves into the number on the display out there says 600. Now, the, now uh, we're going to we're going to take the scan because the scan button lit. We're going to push the scan button. Takes the picture. We're going to come over and we're going to push the plus sign.